Hi and welcome to this lecture on how to create a seasonal time-lapse video. First, what is a seasonal time-lapse video? A seasonal time-lapse video is a video that is taken in a scenic area and which shows how that area changes through the seasons by smoothly blending from one video to the next, like this. I'll be showing how I went about setting up this time-lapse project, including some of the mistakes I made along the way that made editing the final result difficult. Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and create something spectacular with a little less pain. A seasonal time-lapse is an interesting video and one that is bound to wow your viewers, but it does take time and patience to put together, typically around a year if you want to capture all of the seasons. But the effort required is also what makes this type of video unusual and something people will truly appreciate. In this first lecture, I'll share information on how to set up and run the missions to capture the necessary videos during the seasons. Then, in the second lecture, I'll show how to edit these videos together and blend the different scenes to create smooth transitions. Before we embark on this journey, a word of warning these projects take a long time and require a great deal of consistency if they are to work properly. This seems great when you're setting things up in the summer sun and flying those first missions. But remember you will probably also be out there running these missions in the dead of winter when it is below freezing and there is snow on the ground. With that said, having something that forces you to get out there and fly at least once or twice a month is great for keeping things going even during those winter months. So let's get started. Ideally the drone you start shooting with is the same one that you will end with or at least has very similar characteristics. In my case I shot about six months of footage using a home built F550 and a GoPro before switching to a Phantom 3. Sadly none of that original footage was any use after the switch. You can set up the mission in either the mission hub, as I did, or create one on the ground. It really doesn't matter how you set it up, but one thing I would advise is that you download a backup of the mission once you start. It will be a shame to get six months into the project, accidentally delete the mission, and have to start all over again. You can learn how to backup a mission in Phantom Film School 1. There are a few things to consider when creating the mission files. Ideally they should be of an area that is scenic and will show off the changes of the seasons, such as an area with lots of trees that turn bright colors in fall. But there are a few other things that we need to look for in terms of practicality that will help us during the editing phase later. First, you need to find a takeoff area that can be used all year round even when there is snow on the ground. Since the altitude for all points is determined from the takeoff point, if you end up taking off from a different altitude because your normal area is inaccessible, it can make enough of a difference to make stitching the final video together difficult. One thing that I learned is that the camera angle on the first waypoint is often way off, so I recommend creating a throwaway waypoint as the first waypoint, ideally somewhere near your starting point. Later, when you start editing, you will ideally want the transition points to be on a section of the video where the amount of movement is limited, such as flying in a straight line with no sharp yaw or gimbal movements. The more movement, the more trouble you will have matching the results, so make sure there are a number of straight or gently curving sections, if at all possible. Another thing to remember is that you will need some points of interest in the video that draw the eye but don't move over time. We will use these in the editing phase as anchor points to help line things up. Ideally these will be large and contain some straight lines as it will help with rotation and sizing. In my case I used this bridge, the gazebo, and the bridge at the end of the pond. I also found that the yellow lines in the middle of the road and the sharp lines created by the houses were also very helpful. Whether to update the Leechy software and the drone firmware as new versions come out is a more difficult question. 
On the plus side, I found the later versions of the software provided much smoother results and produced a much more cinematic look. But those changes also changed some of the transition points which made editing more difficult. I'll leave that up to you. Personally, I usually do make the updates, but only after they've been out for at least a few weeks to see if any issues arise. Finally, if you don't want to be in the final video, then you also need to find a place to stand that is hidden. Trees can be ideal for this as you can duck behind them for a few seconds when the drone is pointing your way. But you can also use shady areas, walls, etc. For the project that I ran, I had several points of interest that the drone switched between as it flew around the pond. The idea was to show off different areas. However, with hindsight, I really made it a bit too complex. There were a number of places where the drone had to make fast turns and these were incredibly difficult to match when editing the final video. A simpler solution would have provided a much better result as the focus would then have been on just how the seasons changed instead of the movement of the camera. Once you have your mission, run it once or twice and review the footage to make sure it includes all of the areas you want to see in the final result and paying particular attention to include areas where you expect to see dramatic changes. Make any last minute tweaks, then run the mission again and store the video in a folder that is backed up automatically. Rename the files so that you know when the footage was taken. I recommend starting the file name with the year, month and day, e.g. 20170205 for February 5th, 2017. This will allow you to easily sort the files into the order they were taken during the editing phase. Since you want everything to be as consistent as possible, write down all of the settings that you had for the camera, etc. This includes the image size, frame rate, color filter, and your settings for saturation, contrast, and sharpness. The most important ones here are the image size and frame rate, as it will be harder to reduce the effects of these during editing. Now that you have your baseline, get out there and run the mission, ideally every two weeks. One trick that I learned a little too late is that there are little differences with each run and the camera can be slightly off even when it doesn't appear to be on the screen. To combat this, I recommend running each mission twice. Disk is cheap, but your time is not. Running the mission every two weeks, or whenever something significant happens, such as the best four colors or a beautiful snowfall, you should end up with more video than you actually need. That's okay, as it actually allows you to select just the best footage for your final product. This concludes the first lecture. I hope you found it useful in getting you started. In the next lecture, I will show you how to line up your footage ready for editing and then blend the results together into a single video. Until then, enjoy capturing the footage and thank you for watching.